Hello, and thank you so much for coming by the channel today. I really appreciate it. My name is Susan. This channel is Road Reads, and we are at the end of the first week of October. Can you believe it? Already here, one week down in the lovely month of October devoted to Victorian reading, and it has been an amazing reading week for me. Before I go into what I have read this week, let me just quickly go over where I landed with my TBR because I was all over the place in my TBR video. As you know, I don't prepare for my videos very much. So I was really going through the thought process as the camera was rolling, but what happened was the next day I walked into my little office here and I thought, what if I take a tale of two cities off of the TBR? What if I save that for December? Like I read David Copperfield last December and finished it on January 1st. What if I do that? And as soon as I did that, everything else just clicked into place. So this is where I landed with my TBR. Thomas Hardy's The Mayor of Casterbridge, Mary Elizabeth Braden's Lady Audley's Secret, Elizabeth Gaskell's Cranford, Anthony Trollope's The Way We Live Now, and Oscar Wilde's The Canterville Ghost. In addition to that, those five Victorian works, I want to read Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, which is pre-Victorian, but perfect for the month of October, I think. So that's where I landed with my TBR for Victober, and I felt really good about that. As it turns out, I've read quite a bit from that TBR this month. So the first book I finished was Cranford by Elizabeth Gaskell. I have to admit, I had second thoughts after I was a little bit into this book. I just wondered, was I really in the mood for a delightful story? You know, when sometimes you just want something grittier, <laughs> Uh, I, I didn't know that Cranford was really the best thing. I was contemplating maybe just putting it to the side for now. I know I want to eventually read Cranford, but I'm so happy I didn't do that. I read Cranford this past week and I absolutely loved it. While, yes, it's silly in the way that it's all about, you know, the snobbery of a certain class over other classes in, you know, this English society that is dominated by women, which I love that part. The first line from this book is just perfect. Uh, th there's also a lot of heart in this book. And in fact, near the end, I actually dogged eared the page. I won't say what happened, obviously. I... I welled up. My eyes, it took a couple of minutes before I could continue reading. I, I had so many tears welled up in my eyes. And they weren't like tears of sadness They were or, or of joy. They were just tears. I was just touched. I was really touched by what happened. And any book that can do that to me, because I am not, I'm not a big crier when it comes to reading. I'm a big crier in general, but not when it comes to reading. Any book that does that, you know there's a lot of heart behind it if it's going to affect me that way. So this was five stars. This was the way I started October 23, 2023, and I, 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 I absolutely ended up loving Cranford. After that, I read Oscar Wilde's short story, The Canterville Ghost. I have told you on this channel, I'm not really a ghost story type of person. However, I wanted to read Oscar Wilde and it's a short story. So I wanted to have that genre within my Victober this year. And while, you know, maybe this was no five star read for me, it wasn't, I, I gave it three stars. I'm still happy I read it. It's Oscar Wilde, so it's smart and it's funny and, and witty and sarcastic. And it's not your typical ghost story. So it wasn't what I expected. And anytime something is not what I expect, that's almost always a good thing for me. And it's a quick read. So I'm happy I read it. Uh, it didn't uh, phase me maybe as much as it might phase you or some other reader, but still happy that it has been read. And then the next book I read, I devoured over two days. And I like 93% of it I read via audiobook. I went on to Scribd, 
got the audiobook, started listening to it, and the narrator, the narration was so slow. But I sped this one up to 1 1.2, and, and at that speed, this narrator sounded normal to me. And that is how I digested almost all of The Mayor of Casterbridge by Thomas Hardy. So now I have read three Thomas Hardy novels. I loved The Mayor of Casterbridge. I was in it all the way. It is not, to me, the masterpiece that Tess is. And I even would slide it right below Jude the Obscure. For me, Tess was five stars, Jude the Obscure was four stars. The Mayor of Casterbridge is also four stars, but maybe put that right in under Jude as far as how I would rank them so far. But as, as far as plot went and the rhythm and pacing of the story, it worked for me 100%. I know you all have already read The Mayor of Casterbridge because it was the group read last year and and so I know a lot of people have already read it. But just for, for those few like me who hadn't read it yet, it starts with a man a young man, 21 years old, I believe. And he and his wife and their baby arrive in a town. The, the man, the husband, the father, he starts drinking and he is a bad, bad drunk and he has anger issues and he offers to sell his wife. The wife is so frustrated and over him at this point, she goes along with it. And, and from there, the repercussions of this original sin he committed. That is what the rest of the book is going to present to us. It worked for me. I, any moment I could be listening to that audiobook, I was listening to that audiobook while I was doing other things, while I was driving, while I was going to the grocery store, uh, while I was cleaning at the house. Any minute I had, I wanted to know more about this story. So for me, The Mayor of Casterbridge was a total win. I really, really enjoyed it. And then, like I said, I have been reading the group read, uh, Anthony Trollope's The Way We Live Now. I'm so happy I decided to read this. I haven't been participating on Discord with this book, but I have been following the reading schedule. Whether or not that will continue, I don't know. I have never followed a reading schedule since I've been on BookTube, but that's also because I've never really participated as a part of the group with group reads. I have just been reading a book that a group is reading because I don't know, I kind of like the idea. The host of Victober 2023 have all said this reads really fast. So even though it's a long novel, it doesn't read slowly and they are absolutely correct. I am really enjoying this so far. So we'll see. We'll see if I just zoom ahead and finish this book by the end of, by the time I see you next weekend or if I am still pacing myself along with the schedule. So as far as Victorian reading this month goes, technically I only have Lady Oddly's Secret left and, and also to finish this. So... Wonderful, but before I get to Lady Audley's Secret this month, I, I am hoping this weekend to read Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. I hate that I haven't read this already in life. I've been wanting to read this f since I was about 16 years old and someone told me you have to read Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. It is one of the finest novels of all time. And I, here I am, all these, all this time later, still hadn't read Frankenstein. So, really hoping to read this this weekend, and of course, you know, keep up in the chapters in this. So that's my goal for this weekend, and then probably next week I'll start Lady Oddly's Secret. Now, as for a Tale of Two Cities, which when I did my video last week, I thought this is a must for Victober. I've looked at my, my past. I have never finished a Dickens during Victober. So why start now? Dickens and all of these Victorian authors can be read at any time of the year. But I kind of love what I did last year where I read Dickens during that whole, you know how Christmas reading is like time outside of time. <laughs> and I, that's where I read the bulk of David Copperfield last year and then I finished it on January 1st. So... Who knows, maybe I'll, st since I'm so far ahead on my Victober reading, maybe I'll still do A Tale of Two Cities this month. But if I don't, 
I will probably make it a Dickens December again and read it in December. So that could go either way. I'll keep you posted, but it is officially off of my TBR. So we'll just see. So that is how things are going so far. I'm, I'm pleased as punch. Let me know in the comments, how is your Victober reading going? Or maybe you're not participating in Victober, but you're reading Stephen King or something else that you just think is so autumnal, so October perfect. So let me know about that in the comments. I would love to hear from you and I will see you again very soon. Bye.